What is up ladies and gentlemen, Septic Falcon here and welcome to the Status Report Highlight for the 24th of October 2017. And this week Eugen is uncovering some more details about the 0.63 experimental release. Victor teases a video with some of the updates to player movement based on the Gamescom feedback. Merrick talks about the future of Daisy modding and our audio designer Andre has some exciting audio updates. So let's not mess about shall we and kick things straight off with lead producer Eugen, who says, Dear players, since we dipped into the topic of what beta is the last time, I wanted to continue exactly in that regard with more information on our intentions. I have covered the process of how our server files and modding will be handled briefly in the last status report, and I want to talk about the process of getting from the experimental update to stable update in greater detail. There are tons of changes coming, since it's basically a whole new game, but the core of what makes Daisy so special is never gonna change. The unpredictable human behavior in a large open world environment, where we want to see you go through both the hero moments, bandit life, or just being a Bambi lost in the vastness of Chernerus. There are so many friendships I've seen happen in this game unlike anything I have experienced before. Stories that you remember for years, or action that gets your blood pumping like nothing else. But back to the topic at hand, our goal with the first experimental is to provide a meaningful experience. We will all let you know before it happens, and prepare accordingly, with enough resources to handle the possibility of a large amount of people getting in. If need be, we will utilize stable branch servers to offer the experience to the largest amount of people possible. The first experimental build is expected to focus on some of the core systems of the game, which will include most of the gameplay that has been talked about. During this experimental period, we will monitor the player actions, gather feedback and iterate quickly on the state of the game. As said, not all beta features are expected to hit the first experimental release, and most will be introduced gradually before the version hits stable servers. We are taking a safer approach to scale the gameplay, and we will focus heavily on polish during this period. So turning on a feature, gathering feedback, polishing it up, rinse and repeat with the next thing. The features from our main feature list that are rather risky for the beta release include Helicopters mm -mm. Shooting from vehicles mm -mm -mm. Bicycles and motorcycles Barricading Could this be the barricading of houses that you've all been mentioning? Hmm, well, let's wait and see And Bow Combat Which I know a lot of us including me are looking forward to being improved All are quite complex and have lots of trickle down effects on all sorts of systems From persistence to performance we want you to keep that in mind for the first release, as we already know that we will be playing it safe to keep the experience intact. I'll keep you updated if anything changes, however, there is no change as to our intent of bringing these into the game eventually. Another part of the road to beta is content, that means weapons for example. As you might know, we have tons of unused content, and things that we plan to add to Daisy over time. There is a selected set of content for beta, and I'll try to talk about the exact details in a status report when we have the content lists finalized. Rest assured, any content that we've teased at places like our Trello board will eventually be available in the base game, and it's our intention to release that content gradually utilizing larger content packs. Backing up, we want you to know that we haven't forgotten about our live game, the 0.62 Stable Branch. Even if it has been sidelined to bring you this amazing new experience, we are still monitoring larger issues and trying to keep things intact until beta arrives. Thanks for the juicy info, Eugen. Now let's move on to lead gameplay programmer, Mirak. As I promised the last time, today I would like to write about the background of modding possibilities in 0.63. I don't want to write about the tools, which we will release, but more about what can be done with the scripting. If you remember my Q&A video, I was talking about how the gameplay is programmed on three levels, the engine low level, gameplay systems middle level, and scripts high level. I will leave a link to this video in the description below if you want to check it out. So ultimately, we can say that modding possibilities depend on what engine and gameplay systems we expose for scripting. And this, exposing systems for modification, is the major part of modding, which we're currently working on. With the power of N4 script, which syntax is very similar to C Sharp or Java, we would like to give modders the ability to not only create variations of DayZ, but to create some different game genres within the DayZ universe, with the basic premise of it still being an MMO. That means things like a Fallout-style RPG, isometric action game, or even a point-and-click adventure, for example. Ooh, somebody, start penning ideas for a retro DayZ point-and-click adventure. Lovely. As an example, we've added the support to create a game mode in which the standard DayZ player instance is not available. You can imagine yourself how this can be usable. To provide one example, we are using this mode in our internal scene editor, which is completely made by scripts. Of course, that's not quite simple, and we have to think twice about exposing any systems due to security reasons. 
We know that when we release modding support, it's possible that some of the tech features required to accomplish the goal of making a completely new genre will be missing, so we're counting on the option to extend scripting interfaces even after 1.0 release. So this is it. Our goal is not only to create a moddable game, it is to create a platform where we provide as much as we can for all the creative modders out there. Whew, I might even have a tinkle at modding myself. Merrick made that sound really juicy. And next up, lead designer Victor, who starts by saying, Today I would like to show and talk a bit about the progress in the animation team. We have put together a very short video showcasing some of the recent changes and new animations. Victor then warns us and asks us to ignore the sounds, as it is something they are currently working on. <laughs> it sounds like a 70s kung fu movie. Oh, you want to fight? I show you the dragon fist. Anyway, let's take a look at the video. In the first part, we can see various animations for weapons. The weapons team is now moving gun by gun, gradually implementing our beta list of weapons into the 0.63 build. This includes, of course, some work on the animation side of things, since animations and also animation graphs need to be updated to make sure everything is played correctly. Each individual weapon has many detailed animations for all situations that can happen. For instance, the FNX now has 28 individual animations. The most recent guns implemented on 0.63 include CR-75, Makarov, and the team is currently finishing the UMP-45. Another part the animation team are focused on is player locomotion. We are working closely with the programmers and designers to make sure the player moves nicely and is fully responsive at the same time. The video cannot really show how the controls feel, but compared to the old system, this is already a huge improvement. We are trying to expand on the positive feedback we have received. We are adding player inertia and also bringing some visual improvements. One thing that is in progress at the moment is how the player character turns. We have come to a working prototype that everyone seems to be happy about, and now we will implement it for every stance and item. Another change to locomotion is related to how the player walks and runs in different directions. We have reworked some parts of the graph and replaced it with different animations when going to the left or right. This allows us to have better control when players switch legs while changing direction. Thanks to that, there will be less or almost no clipping of the legs with each other. In the last part of the video, you can see some falling animations. These have been updated recently. We have adjusted each of the fall animations so it better blends and is more visible if you fall from big heights. In the next step, we will also update the actual landing on the ground. Landing from small falls will be rather a procedural animation in the hips and spine so that we don't take any control from the player. Landing from a higher falls will be an actual full body animation. Well that all sounds very good to me, and I don't know if you guys noticed, the gun not moving with the reload animation or the recoil, something a lot of you voiced your concerns about in the comment section of the last status report. And finally let's move on to sound designer Andre. It's been a while since you've had an update from our audio department so here it is. Over the last couple of months, we have mostly been working on an entire new set of player sounds. With the introduction of a new player controller in 0.63, we decided to give our player character a massive audio overhaul. One of the things we are working on right now are the Foley sounds. No, not Axel Foley. Just last week, we visited our studio in Nisek and recorded many types of clothing and various materials, which we want to use, after proper editing and processing, for different types of in-game clothes and gear audio. It will be a fairly complex system with separate sounds for different types of footwear, top and bottom clothing, but also backpacks and weapons. We are sure that more detailed and diversified Foley audio will enhance the immersion and overall experience. You can watch a sneak peek of the team in the studio on screen now.
A major part of player audio also consists of the vocal sounds. This week, we will be recording a completely new set of voices for our characters, with more than 20 actors scheduled to participate. Ah, oh, they didn't give me a call. Together with the recording of the character sounds, we're also going to record some new sounds for the infected. We have been planning it for so long, and now it's finally time to do it. It took us a lot of time to synchronize our ideas with the gameplay design department, and as always, it was quite challenging to get the support from the already busy programmers and scripters so that we can achieve the best possible results. Luckily, we've been successful at that, and our recording session can take place in our Masek studio, spanning over a couple of days and altogether involving almost 30 different people. We will surely produce massive amounts of raw audio material, which we will then process, mix and implement into our game. We will do some comparative videos so that you guys can see how we practically transform the voices of our perfectly healthy actors into the bloodlust infected generous inhabitants. Finally from Andre, there have been some questions as to why we have some 0.61 sounds in our latest devlog video. Simply put, it was because our Gamescom build was internally on a separate branch, so ambient sounds were not merged there. The 0.62 changes will not be reverted for the 0.63 version, but they will eventually be improved with new sounds and completely new overall audio mix, including new player and infected sounds, new combat sounds, ranged and melee, and also with a completely reworked vehicle sound system that is being written now. Not gonna lie, ladies and gentlemen, this status report has been a very interesting one. Some very good information, just that last sentence there, reworked vehicle sound system, has got me pretty hyped for the future of DayZ. So let's talk about this in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to read the status report in full yourselves, because right down the bottom there is the community spotlight. All the great DayZ community content creators showing off their skills, as well as a chance to win some DayZ swag. Go check it out, link will be in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content I create, and I'll see you peeps next time.